it has evaporation, you'll have to set up the data collection yourself. Click on the mode, time-based, at the bottom of the screen. Set your time units to minutes and have the computer collect 12 samples per minute. This is roughly once every five seconds. You want to have the data collection started manually so you can tell when it starts. Scroll down and tell it to end collection after 15 minutes. Probably you will not go this long, but this will give you sufficient time to collect the data that you need in order to have good results. Once the lauric acid is completely melted, you can begin your data collection. You'll notice at this point, the temperature is reading well above 50 degrees. We can start at any temperature above 50 degrees, though if the temperature is in the 90s or near 100, that would probably take quite a while. It takes about 45 seconds for the temperature probe to adjust to the temperature of your uh, liquid. In the meantime, you're going to lower the test tube into a room temperature water bath. This will help to cool the lauric acid more quickly. You can, with a slight up and down motion for a longer probe, or with a swirling motion for a cooler probe, begin to stir. Also, start collecting your data. Once you've collected your data, it is time to find the melting point. Recall that we are going to need to have two lines intersecting. One line will be for the cooling portion of the first part of the graph and the other for the flatter region. You can see that even though it should be a very flat and zero slope, it isn't exactly. So we're going to need to extrapolate to a data point that wasn't collected. We're going to highlight the portion of the graph that has a very straight slope. You do this by drawing your finger across the uh, iPad. You can do the same thing with the mouse. You can see that in this region here and near the top, there are slight curves. So I might want to narrow this region just a little bit to make sure that I am not getting areas that are going to affect the uh, straight line pathway. Once I have highlighted this region, I now need to have the linear fit of this data. I'm going to click on the graphical icon down here and have it apply a curve fit. It's going to apply a linear fit by default. In other labs, we may use other slopes, but this is the one we're going to use right now. I'm going to hit apply. I want to be able to see where that region is, so I'm going to click on the box and move it down so it's out of the way. Now I need to highlight the region of the graph where the slope is the lowest and closest to zero. That is the flattest region of the graph. I'm going to do the same thing here Clicking on the corner, adding a curve fit, applying, and then moving the box out of the way. We're interested in this region right here where the two lines overlap. I can touch on that line, and if I want to be able to see what that data point is, I'm going to have to click here and turn on interpolate. If you don't see the two numbers corresponding to the two data points from the separate lines, you will have to toggle on the interpolate switch. So in this case, it is showing me that one of these is at 43.7 and the other at 44.09. I want to move this over to where they're a little bit closer. There, that looks like a good overlap. So I'm going to write down 43.6 as the melting point of my lauric acid. 